So I, my new gas piston for my chair just came in today. Nice box. New gas piston. Uh, cap to protect you from accidentally pushing on it so it doesn't spring open on you. So this is my replacement piston I just got. Um, I did some measurements on my chair. Most chairs all have a two inch base with a, which is down here. Let me take it out of the bag. It's a two inch base down here with a 1.1 inch shaft. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it's the shaft is actually tapered right here. The taper starts right here. So the 1.1 inches is actually measured right here, which is right about where the chair will rest on it after the cap after you put it up inside the chair will come in here and pinch right into here and rest right into this position. Um, when you're measuring yours, realize don't measure the bottom that sticks out of the chair because this is too small. This has got a slight taper so it can go in. So you want to measure up in here. It actually will rest right about here. And I'll show you on the chair. Um, you, what you want to do is measure the length of your piston uh, housing and the and how much rise your chair has so you can get the right um, gas piston for your chair. Now I got one that's a little bigger than the one I had because I didn't like how short mine felt for me. I'm 6'1", so that was a little short for me feeling. So I got a slightly longer one, but this particular chair is a 7 inch shaft with a three inch piston rise. I got one that's just a little bit bigger. I believe it's an eight inch with a, uh, it's either a three or four inch rise. So it'll be a little taller when I'm done. It's supposed to hold up to 450 pounds, which is a little heavier duty than the one that's actually in the chair right now. But we'll show you where on the chair you'll measure these things. Let's raise it up first so you can see the shaft. Okay. So this is the dust cover, and here's the piston. So I measured it right here. And so you've got, if you want to measure the height, this is the top of my piston housing. Um, I know that because I felt it. Uh, and here's the bottom. So I took a rough measurement with a tape measure from here to here. Gave me the three inches. And then I measured from here to here, and that was my rise, because I know my chair stops right here, because I looked at it earlier. Uh, so that's how you'll measure it. Now the taper goes from here to about in here, as there's actually a little hole that I could see through, but I don't think I'm going to get a camera in there to see it. Uh, I'm not sure if we can get down inside there and actually see inside. So you can see the top of the piston piece in there. So it actually comes from here, from here to here. Like I say, the taper, and here's your 1.1 inch. Simple measurements. I have a slightly more sophisticated measuring device. I have some calipers. I do uh, some uh, reloading. So I actually have some calipers that help me measure. So I was able to measure to get my 1.1 inch in there. And then I was able to measure here for my two inches. And then I matched that up on my new piston. So you want to do that before anything. Now, there's a couple of tricks on taking your chair apart because these are all press fitted and they have been on there for quite a while. There's a couple of methods I've seen. One of them involves shooting oil, penetrating oil down in there, turning the chair upside down, taking a pipe wrench, grabbing the shaft and wrenching it around until it comes out. I really don't like that method because if for some reason your new piston doesn't fit, you just marred up all this and that will ruin your old piston uh, if that 
marring goes into down inside and you'll ruin the seals for sure. So I don't like that method because if for some reason if the piston you have new doesn't work, you can't put your chair back together. The other method is by not removing the legs first in uh, with a good heavy dead blow hammer, not a metal hammer. It's a it's a uh, dead blow hammer is a plastic coated hammer with lead weight in it. So when you hit uh, the lead weights, keep it from bouncing. But it also means the plastic housing that the dead blow material is housed in does not dent your chair. Uh, if you're unlucky enough not to have a dead blow ha hammer, which I don't, uh, then you need to put a piece of wood on the metal so that way you don't dent it and hit the metal. Um, usually this will take a couple of people, somebody to hold the chair up off the ground so you can hit it and use the gravity to help that the seat fall off. Um, you want to, I've seen it with the seat on, not taking off the things, that way you have the extra weight of the seat helping you. So it does take a couple of people to do this. Um, or you can put some 2x4s and stretch it in between a couple of things and support it if you don't have help and then hit it. Don't lay your 2x4s like this, lay them like this, that way you have the long piece here. I uh, don't have any of that stuff so I'll probably be doing the holding method here in just a little bit and doing that. So this is the general. To get it out of here, all you're going to do is just take your hammer preferably a good sized sledgehammer and just hit that until it pops out. Now the problem with my chair using the 2x4 method is the legs fold. So the 2x4 method will not work with this chair. So I'm going to have to use the holding method or rope and tie it up on something. I have not quite decided that so that's my next step. Let me get my chair all prepped up and ready to go and uh, I'll uh, shoot that video of me taking the chair apart and putting it back together in just a second. But there's the basics. Okay, old piston out got my new piston here. I checked the insert and it looks like it's going to lock in there just fine. I'm not going to push it in yet. Base. I'm going to slip right in here which is going to be good. So here we go. Let's do the assembly. Just backwards. In there. Locked in. Important factor to realize is the shipping piston has a protective Thing. we talked about it. Make sure we take that off before we insert it, the chair on top of it. Otherwise you're not going to get the actuator to work. So here we go. Dust cover. chair. Ooh, it's taller because I did get a bigger one. So, chair is all fixed. Hey everybody, let's check it out. Ooh, that feels much nicer. Oh, okay. Only time will tell now on how the chair is going to do. So, we'll see how it does. with this newly repaired chair for about a week now and the piston's been really nice. It has not sunk on me while I've been playing. Uh, feels really good. I'm glad I, for me, I got the longer piston uh, 
for me because this chair now feels good for my legs. Obviously, if you're not tall like me, you want to make sure you don't you want to get the exact size length of piston. Um, obviously, you, you can shrink them down to fit you, but uh, for me, the stock piston was always too short, so I was pleased to get the longer piston. Important thing to remember, measure where your chair comes in at and measure where it comes in at the bottom of the chair. Uh, get your length right and get your throw. It's in the descriptions. Most chairs are 2 inch and 1.1 inch. Now the gas piston that I got was from Oak Leaf. Um, off of Amazon, less than 30 bucks. I'll put a, a description, a link to, in the description of the video for the yeah. piston that I bought, um, but there's quite a few out there. I've been pretty happy with that brand. Uh, this is my first repair, so I'm hoping over time this uh, piston will do a good job. See you again.